welcome to the course on polymers in which we are discussing concepts, uh, applications, properties and sustainability. Uh, this is uh, towards the end of 10th uh, week uh, where we are trying to analyze uh, the polymer processing and uh, recycling techniques. Uh, as we uh, wind up our discussion of uh, processing and recycling techniques, uh, we have to look at uh, uh, what are the alternate possibilities of doing this upcycling as effectively as possible, also incorporating renewable sources in them. And so keeping the overall sustainability in mind, what are the strategies available? So having done this discussion, then uh, we will move on to looking at the flow behavior itself and understand the rheology of materials in much more detail so that uh, all of these processing and recycling operations uh, could be done effectively based on the knowledge of rheology. So we will look at uh, biocomposites as a possibility uh, where uh, some part of uh, the recycled uh, uh, material incorporates uh, renewable uh, sources uh, based polymers and uh, then uh, more importantly can we effectively exploit the techniques which are available for polymer processing in these con context of biocomposites. So can we use twin screw extruder which is an excellent uh, device for mixing. Uh, can we use the reaction injection molding in which case we combine molding and reaction operations and resin transfer molding which can give us quite complex shape including the reinforcement. Uh, can, can this be done effectively for biocomposites? And uh, when we mean biocomposites what we are saying is can we not use uh, natural polymers uh, some of the other fillers which are again arising from uh, waste plastic as well as many other uh, recycled materials along with uh, the polymers and uh, can we have effective composites based on these. Because if we are able to do this, what we are doing is effectively utilizing uh, fibers, flakes, discs, layers, powders, different forms of uh, waste plastic. So we are not constraining itself in terms of a pellet of pure polymer which is available as a recycled plastic. Secondly, we are also using uh, natural fibers which are based on renewable sources and incorporating it in this composite product. So we can uh, look at uh, use of twin extruder as a possibility in the recycling operations. Uh, we have uh, this as the one of the best uh, devices uh, in terms of uh, mixing. Uh, it comes in uh, co-rotating as well as counter-rotating versions. So you can have screws which are counter-rotating or both of them are rotating in the same direction. And uh, so both this way uh, you can achieve uh, pumping efficiency in one case or very high efficiency of dispersion in other case. And uh, given that we are looking at uh, mixed waste plastic composites uh, recycling, uh, blending, mixing and dispersion are a key requirement. So therefore uh, the uh, 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 twin screw extruder can be used but the question uh, for example is that uh, it, can it disperse also cellulose and uh, cellulose uh, fibers are very strong because of the in hydrogen bonding which is present in them and uh, but if we disperse by breaking these hydrogen bonding we will get fibrillated cellulose which can do a much better task of reinforcement. So is that possible? So that is something uh, for us to think about. We can also think in terms of an alternate process uh, of uh, using reaction injection molding because whenever there is fast polymerization, we can do synchronization of polymerization and mold flow. So effectively we are combining the polymerization operation and molding in one and uh, this is quite commonly used for nylons and polyurethanes and epoxies. And also uh, one of the polymers uh, which is cyclopentadiene uh, can also be made using this. And uh, basically the idea is to start with uh, both components uh, monomers uh, or monomers and catalysts, monomers and initiators and then uh, meter and mix them and then uh, uh, basically make them flow into the mold. And uh, as soon as mixing starts happening, reaction starts and in a quick uh, amount of time it should be made to flow in the mold so that uh, polymerization reactions can be completed and solidifications can set in. In case of uh, cyclopentadiene, it is a promising polymer uh, where uh, it can be used also as a self-healing polymer. So many of the 
composites, if you read about self-healing materials, where let's say a crack uh, develops, what you can do is this cyclopentadiene can be kept as small capsules. And then uh, as soon as crack happens, the cyclopentadiene capsule also breaks, but it then flows and then reacts instantaneously because of the fast polymerization process. And therefore, uh, we can use it as a in uh, self-healing material. It can be also molded in this reaction injection molding to give you parts which are uh, quite effective in their properties. Other uh, enhancement that can be done keeping biocomposites in mind is can we not have a 3D uh, fiber preform of uh, natural fibers and uh, can we not do what's called a structural reaction injection molding. So in which case in the mold we already keep the fibers and then have the monomers and the uh, overall components uh, flow in and reaction at the same time. And uh, resin transfer molding is also a similar technique where uh, the fabric and uh, fiber preforms are kept and then uh, a resin is allowed to flow in and fill all the parts of uh, the uh, overall preform. This is used quite common in uh, aerospace and defense applications. And uh, this is basically where composite manufacturing method where uh, reinforcement uh, is there, flow of resin is achieved and then uh, polymerization and cross-linking happens. And generally uh, this is used for materials which are uh, slower uh, cross-linking because extremely large parts are processed this way. In reaction injection molding we are looking at small parts being molded and also complex shape. While resin transfer molding can uh, be of uh, not as complex shapes but very large parts. And so this is useful because the tooling cost associated with resin transfer molding is much less. Whenever you have injection molding or any other molding operation, you require a mold which is quite costly. But resin transfer molding uses bag and only the bottom surface is what is used for tooling. So therefore, uh, it, it ends up being less costly compared to many other composite uh, making or polymer making operations. So one question again that can be posed is, can you make a biocomposite uh, material? And this is one example where jute uh, and other uh, fibers are used as skin material, agricultural waste is used as a core material and then a preform of the skin and uh, the overall core is kept in a resin transfer molding operation in which a bio based resin or a material, a polymeric material which is based on soy which is a pro soy based protein material which is in the resinous form can come in and then uh, react and solidify and in the end we can get a biocomposite. So almost this is like making wood itself. So can such a process be realized and will it be cost effective and influential. So with this uh, we will close this uh, lecture associated with uh, discussion of various ways of upcycling uh, polymeric materials so that we have a wider variety of applications to choose from while recycling of these polymers are thought of. Thank you.